Look, have you ever heard of Ape Leadership? Sharon Hornells from here, day 1,272 of What You Up To Now. And I will admit, I have absolutely never heard the expression Ape Leadership. It was our idiom for about leadership today. And I, what I did is I took it and I twisted it into the different types of leadership. And when I researched the different types of leadership, I was surprised to find that it's gone from like three or four when I was in school and learning about leadership. Granted, that was, you know, several decades ago to 10. Now there's 10 versions of, or 10 types of leadership. And so I talked about and supersize your business, the 10 types of leadership and asked people, what type are you using to grow and supersize your business? And I'm really curious to find out what style, what type of leader different business owners and, and leaders and organizations believe that they are. Now, I thought that was funny because I don't think I'm any of the 10 on the list. I think I'm a combination of many of them, but not anyone. I learned uh, that there were like mainly three or four types of leaders, but there was also something that was coming into to belief and play called situational leadership. Depending on what your job was, what your role was, what your outcomes were, what you wanted to achieve, you became the type of leader that you needed to be to lead given the resources that you had. So given the people and the skills and the abilities and things that you had, you would tailor your leadership style to fit the situation. And I pretty much approached my whole career in life that way. And so to find out there's actually 10 different leadership types, I'm like, what? So uh, I'm curious. Number one, have you ever heard the expression ape leader? And, and it means, actually, it's, it's really interesting. It's from an old proverb. It's obsolete. And I think part of why I've never heard it is it's it's pretty ridiculous. And it's it's nobody uses it anymore. Because it used to be a proverb that basically said that if you were an old maid, or a spinster and you never had kids and never procreated and never um, you know, got, got had children and continued the species, You were your punishment was gonna be that you would be in hell leading apes, which I guess it was because at the time, apes, they didn't know about apes, they didn't know how smart they were, uh, and so they just assumed that they were kind of useless animals that just ran around the, the woods and didn't really add much value to the you know chain of life. Well, we've learned much more since then, and of course, that helped to make this particular idiom obsolete. And again, you have to go all the way down to, do you believe in heaven or hell? And why would somebody be punished just because they don't pre procreate or have children, right? Uh, so <laughs> I thought it was interesting. But it's gone now, and so I thought, well, I'm not even gonna talk about an obsolete thing, so let's look at what are the different types of leadership that are available now. And again, I thought it was really interesting. I found an article that like listed the 10, a characteristics of them, pros and cons, and then it gave each one a rating according to the author. This is, of course, only just the author's opinion on a scale of one to five, worst to best. What's the best type of leadership? And in her opinion, autocratic, which was the original you know, type of leadership, was given a one, and then transactional and bureaucratic leadership were given a two, laissez-faire laissez and charismatic were given a three, Democratic servant and collaborative were given a four, and then coaching and transformational leadership were given a five out of five. And I started thinking about it as I was talking about it, and I'm like, well, what happened to situational leadership? Because sometimes we need to be more autocratic. Other times, a lot of times, we're transactional. It's like, this is the project or the organization or the group or the thing that we're leading, and given whatever resources we have in terms of what people are, are, are a part of the organization or the team or the project will determine how big a leadership role or how, how much direction or rules or regulations or guidance or support or servant leadership or democratic you can be based on what the situation is. So personally, I would say I'm none of the above, although I have done and used many of the different types of leadership throughout my career, but I consider myself a situational leader. Even when I'm coaching or consulting, I'm a situational leader. Depending on what the person or the organization needs, that's what I'm gonna provide for them. I'm not going to follow any one of these particular styles as I'm growing and supersizing and building my business. So a question for people today, what type of leader are you? What type of leader do you think you need to be to create the organization that you wanna have and lead in the world? So that was that. Our fun challenge today was still a, not fun challenge, well I call it fun, it's my fun challenge. Let's do one thing every day that centers us, our annual challenge this year. It was fun last year and sometimes I still say fun. And I look for the fun in everything now because it used to have that much fun. And so 
last year was all about fun and in COVID-19 couldn't have thought of a better challenge for that particular year. Uh, but today was about talking about breathing and I shared a couple of the breathing strategies, probably talked too long on this one, but uh, that I like to use that help to make me feel more calm and centered. And one of my favorite ones, and there's lots of versions of it, is you breathe in for a certain count, then you hold it for a cer that same count, then you exhale for that same count, and then you pause for the same number of seconds, and then you repeat the process over and over again. And then you can add to that breathing in something that you want in your life, breathing out something that you don't want in your life. That was one of the strategies I learned or morphed into. And what I learned is at the beginning, I think it was a four second or four count. And then there's versions of a four, there's four, five, seven, eight, ten. how many ever you want to count to as you're inhaling, holding it, exhaling, pausing, and then repeating it and what you're saying or not saying in your mind. Maybe you're just counting. Originally, I just started counting because I wanted to learn how to meditate. And that was a way that I could focus on my breathing and only on my breathing and the counting so all the other stuff in my mind could go away. But then I wanted to supercharge that, so I added, okay, as I'm on my walks, I'm going to actually do this, but I'm going to breathe in what I want and I'm going to let go of what I don't want. If I wanted more peace and calm in my life and less chaos and stress, I would breathe in peace and calm, exhale, chaos and stress or whatever. I usually came up with things that rhymed while I was walking to keep a rhythm. So it's just the way I do it. Everybody has to take everything we learn and make it our own, which was the topic of our Get Up and Go Challenge. Uh, I guess just a, I like to hop on now every day until the challenge starts to just let people know and remind them that, hey, this is coming. This is what we're going to do. This is, you know, a little bit of how we're going to do it. This is what if you do or don't why should we do it why should you care do you want to join us and and this is what to do uh, so just kind of an introductory thing between now and the start of the challenge August 1st I want to do that partly because I selfishly want to get into the rhythm of doing another video every day uh, and making sure that it, it flows with what I'm used to doing since it's been three months since I've done it I haven't done it since April I want to make sure that when we start it's smooth and efficient and easy and it's a it's a no-brainer and I've already committed to myself, I'm going to set the little cow timer, 10 minutes, when that baby goes off, the video's done. So hopefully I'm not mid-sentence too often, but I do want to, uh, I think that's a personal improvement and a, an area for me is to be more clear and concise in my communication and setting a timer for that, making sure I don't go over that 10 minute limit is one way to do that. Now I have discovered recently that some of the platforms that I had my 10 minute rule for uh, no longer restrict you to having only a 10 minute video. LinkedIn used to as well as uh, Instagram and so part of my strategy was everything was always 10 minutes or less. Well now it turns out I found out actually just this last week I think that I could upload longer than 10 minute videos on both Instagram and LinkedIn. Why? I just I, I haven't seen that written anywhere or found out anywhere. I just tried it and it worked, which delighted me by the way, because for some reason I've been very wordy and very talkative on the Supersize Your Business uh, idioms about leadership. Apparently I have a lot to say about leadership that I didn't realize I had a lot to say about. So what else is going on? A whole lot of stuff. Lots of fun relatives in town this last week and weekend and enjoying them. My mom who is 84 and her sisters get together once a year except for one sister's in, in Florida now with her husband who's not feeling too well so she couldn't come up this time uh, but otherwise everybody and their spouses have been together and it's just fun to see and realize what amazing human beings my aunts and uncles are and so I enjoy spending a little bit of time with them and getting a little flavor for who they are and who they're becoming as they become older what's become important to them uh, that, that was different than when I experienced them when I was a child. So doing a lot of family things, a lot of relationship things. If I can help you in any way, any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, or direct message me, you can find me a lot of places online. And you can always, you know, just Google search and you can find me. Uh, otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Just letting you know what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. What's working, what's not. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything, of course, filtered through my experiences, my opinion, what's worked for me. Doesn't mean it will or won't work for you, but it does allow you the opportunity to cut out some of the nonsense and the things that I've wasted a ton of time and energy and money on that is just that, a waste of time, 
and resources that we don't need to waste our time and energy on. All right, have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.